This lesson uh, is going to uh, take us through uh, doing a bunch of different types of uh, complex uh, equilibrium calculations. Uh, ones where uh, K, um, solving for K requires us using quadratic equations or uh, K is really, really small and so we have to use different techniques for uh, solving for the equilibrium concentration constant. So our first uh, question here, it's pretty basic, just like the other ones. Um, at 450 degrees Celsius, the equili equilibrium constant K for the following reaction is 1.84 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, just a heads up, you probably will need to pause uh, the video as we go through because uh, the steps will start to get complex, but feel free to pause it and back it up as you see fit. So we've got, uh, we've seen this reaction before going in the opposite direction where it's hydrogen gas and iodine gas reacting to make hydrogen iodide. Um, but this reaction can go uh, in either direction. So we're looking at the much slower uh, um, direction. So it's uh, the decomposition of hydrogen iodide back into the uh, two elements, hydrogen and iodine. So we're starting with the 0.100 mol, uh, moles of HI placed in a 1 liter vessel and it's allowed to reach equilibrium. At a specific temperature, we need to find the concentrations of all the gases at equilibrium. So we're not given any uh, equilibrium concentrations. So uh, initially we need to set up our ice table and we can see that we have it set up properly with the correct coefficient and so now we just need to go and set up the different parts of it. So our initial concentration is uh, as you see here 1.00 of the reactants and none of the products um, of course. We need to determine what our changes are. So because there's a 2 uh, as a coefficient for our reactant, we need to have minus 2x as our change in concentration. But because there's 1s in front of the coefficients, uh, as a coefficients for the products, it's just plus x in each case. So then we can then determine what our um, equilibrium concentration is going to look like. The initial... Um, reactant will have lost 2x and the two products will have each gained um, their concentration by an amount of x. Now there's a couple things we need to think about here. We know that <coughs> k is equal to the uh, products over the reactants and this is what our equilibrium um, con uh, law expression is going to look like. So now we can substitute the equilibrium concentration line into the equation. And so we're going to take a look at what that looks like. So we've got, we know what the um, equilibrium is going to look like, and that is up here. So we plug that in for K, and our concentrations at equilibrium of our uh, products are each in X, so it's XX, and this is our concentration of our um, reactant at equilibrium. Um, and because there is a 2 in front there, like we see it's squared here, we need to put a squared there. Okay, so try and follow. 2 as a coefficient means the 2 as an exponent in the law expression that means we needed two outside the brackets here and this is where things get tricky because now we've got an expression that looks like this x squared over 1.00 minus 2x squared that now this is where a little bit of math trickery comes in I'm sure you take a look at this and you realize something here you realize that we've got a perfect square so in order to solve for x, we can start by taking the square root of both sides. And this ends up being actually a pretty simple, um, pretty simple uh, problem to solve. So I square root uh, this side, and I get um, 0 0.136. And I square root this side, and I get x over 0 0.100 minus 2x. Now I just simply solve for x. And when I solve for x, I'm going to get 1.07 times 10 to the minus 1. That's my x. Now I'm not done yet. I need to go out and actually figure out what my final concentrations are. So I go ahead and I do that. 
and I get my hydrogen gas, which its final concentration would be X, is just simply what we get here. Uh, uh, same thing for iodine. For my <coughs> uh, reactant, it would be my initial concentration minus my change, which gives me that final concentration. So this is an example of a pretty straightforward question where we have a perfect square. Um, now, probably this would be a good time for you to do a, a practice of this. We are going to get into more difficult ones, but take a shot at this one right, uh, this type of question right now. I've got a follow-up question, so pause the video right now, write down the question and take a crack at it. Make sure you use your success criteria for writing your, setting up your ice tables and for setting up the equilibrium uh, law expression because if those things aren't done properly you'll definitely uh, make a mistake. So take this time, pause it, and uh, in a second um, when you get your answer I'll, uh, I'll move the bar here and you can take a look and see if you've done it correctly. Okay, so pause now. Okay, so now that you've tried it, let's take a look at the answer. There you go. So double check and make sure that you got those values. Um, if you have any issues, definitely look to your peers and take a look at sort of where you went wrong. As long as you're getting close to these values, there could be subtle differences due to rounding, um, but you should be getting values close to this. Okay, so that was, uh, these were, this was an example where we uh, need to find the final concentration um, uh, given K and the initial concentration. Let's take a look at an example where K is very small. And these can get tricky. Sometimes equilibrium problems work out to not be perfect squares. Let's take a look at um, a reaction here where we take we look at the decomposition of water back into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. At 100 degree, uh, 1,000 degrees Celsius, K for this reaction is 7.3 times 10 to the minus 18. Now, that is a very, very small number. And so very little of the products are going to be found at equilibrium, which means that the initial concentration of water is not going to change very much, especially if it starts out really, really big. So if we have a 1,000 degrees Celsius water, and it's breaking down, and the initial concentration is set at 0 0.100 molar, or moles per liter, what will the concentration of all gases be at equilibrium? So before we even get into this, understand that this is a very big number compared to that. Therefore, the change in this is going to be very, very small. Um, because this is such a small number. Look to the exponent. If your exponent um, is, really sm is really large in the negatives, you're going to have a very small change there, and that's going to play a role in a second with what uh, your answer looks like. So again, we set up our ice table, as you see here, and uh, we go through and we fill it in. So uh, pause if you need, but take a sec. Make sure you get this table set up the way it is. Of course, we have a change of minus 2x here, a uh, increase of plus 2x, and an increase of x. And we have 0 0.100 minus 2x, plus two, our increase, our final concentration would be 2 times x, and our uh, concentration of O2 would be x. So what's our rate law expression going to look like? Well, let's take a look at this. Our rate law expression, as you see here, nothing changes here. But again, when we plug everything in, we get 2x squared times x over 0 0.100 minus 2x squared. Hmm. This is not going to create a perfect square. We will need to simplify this expression. because this is not a perfect square and it's not going to work out um, as easily as the last problem did. We've got a 4x cubed. That does not work out nicely. So let's take a look at what we can do to simplify this. Now again, we're going to come back and look at the fact that k is really, really small compared to our initial concentration of our uh, reactant. So if our initial concentrations 
are small compared to um, the k value, or sorry, are quite large compared to the k value, we can simplify um, this equation by dropping any x values that are added or subtracted from a number. So to check, test this out, I take my initial concentration on my reactant, divide it by k, and if the number is larger than 1,000, we can simplify. So when we simplify, we now get an a, a expression that looks like this. 7.3 times 10 to the minus 18 is equal to 4 over x cubed. We have to leave that the same. But because the change in our initial concentration of, of water is going to be so small, we can just get rid of this part right here. So now we get a new expression. This is a much easier expression to use. We can easily solve for x. Again, we can only do this, though, if k is really, really small compared to the initial concentration. So we get 4x cubed is equal to 0 0.100 squared times uh, k. So all we did was cross multiply that up. And then we get uh, the value to be 7.3 times 10 to the minus 20. We take the cube root of this and divide by 4, um, which I didn't put in there, but we would uh, divide that whole thing after we uh, um, do the cube root, divided by 4, and we get the following answer. Shoink, and there you go. So our concentration of water is really not going to change. It's going to change by such a small amount that we're not even going to worry about that. Um, Again, 2.6 times 10 to my 7 is 0 0.0000026 uh, moles per liter, which is much smaller than that. But we do, we can figure out what the concentrations of hydrogen gas would be and what oxygen gas would be. And so this is an example where we get an imperfect square, uh, but k is really, really small. Now, it would be nice if things just stayed like that but they don't. So let's take a look at another example where k is big and we get an imperfect square. So what if it's not possible uh, to simplify? Say your initial concentration divided by k is greater than a thousand. What do we do? Well in this case we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve for it. Now anytime I uh, any test that I give you or exam, I'll definitely give you the uh, quadratic formula, but you will have to if, uh, practice these. Go through your math, um, math skills and make sure you master doing uh, quadratic formulas. You will have to FOIL for these questions. So remember that. FOIL, you will have to practice that. So say we've got iodine gas and chlorine gas is going to make uh, iodine chloride. And um, we want to calculate all equilibrium concentrations if 0 0.100 moles of iodine gas and 0 0.500 moles of chlorine gas are placed in a 1 liter vessel and allowed to reach equilibrium. So first step, set up your ice table. Here we go. We've got our ice table right here. Let's plug in everything that we're supposed to have. I put in my initial concentrations. Of course, I have no initial concentration of my product. My change is in x, minus x, minus x, plus 2x there. I set up my equilibrium concentration, 0 0.100 minus x, 0 0.050 minus x and then my equilibrium concentration on my uh, product is going to be 2x. So what's this going to look like? Well we plug in our equilibrium constant which is up here for that specific temperature and we get 2x it's going to square that times these two things. Ah, Not a perfect square. We can tell already that this is not going to create a perfect square. And because both reactants have um, an initial concentration rate over um, the K ratio of greater than um, 1,000, um, or less than 1,000, sorry, um, and it only takes one of these to mess it up, we need to use the quadratic equation. So say that the iodine ratio was still uh, greater than 1,000, but the chlorine one wasn't. 
we would still have to use a quadratic equation here because that would mean that the change in my um, in my initial concentration to my f uh, equilibrium concentration would be a factor. If this change, if x is going to um, have any significant change on the initial concentration, we have to use the quadratic equation. So we always check IC over K. If it's less than a thousand, we have to use the quadratic equation, guys. If it's greater than a thousand, then we can simplify and pretend that it doesn't make a difference. All right, so let's take a look here at what this is going to look like. This is where we have to FOIL. So I actually multiply these two guys out, and this is what I get. I take everything in this bracket, and I cross multiply it up by the constant here. And you can see the work I've done here. All right, and all I'm doing is factoring. I pull my 4x squared over to this side, and I get a quadratic equation here. All I'm going to do is rewrite this out as a proper quadratic, so 5.09x squared minus 1.3x plus 0 0.055 equals 0. So all I did here again was I factored everything properly. Okay, set up my quadratic equation. Now when I do a quadratic equation there is a uh, formula that I can use x, if I want to solve for x, it's minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is my a value, this is my b value, this is my c value. I'm going to go through that again. Whatever number is in front of x squared is my a value. That's why I wrote this equation out like this. Whatever number, including any signs, in front of my x is going to be my b value and whatever number um, is left without an x including signs is going to be my c value so I plug everything into the equation and I'm going to get two numbers and sometimes you get this if you get a negative number you know it can't be that one I get 0 0.039 or 0 0.28 now I know it can't be 0 0.28 because my final concent or my change cannot be greater than my initial concentration. So definitely check this out. One of these numbers is going to make sense, the other one's not. So check it against these equilibrium concentrations. If x is 0 0.28 and I plug it into here, I get 0.1 minus 0 0.28. I'm going to get a negative number. That cannot be your equilibrium concentration. Okay? So I now know that my x, my change in concentration, must be 0 0.039. So now I just plug and play and figure out what my final concentrations are. And here we go. I've solved for them right here. So take a time. I probably went through this pretty quickly, but I would take your time, pause the video right now, go through and make sure you can uh, follow my uh, train of thought throughout this question.